Hey, what's up everyone? This is Runko Pop, and welcome back to what I'm calling Runko Pop's Drawloween. For the month of October, I am drawing the horror movie killers, and we started off the month with Chucky from Child's Play. Today we're going to be looking at Ghostface, I believe that's his name. I could be wrong, but I I'm pretty sure it's Ghostface. That's what I'm going to be calling him at least. Uh, I've never drawn this character, like many of these characters for the Drawloween. I've never drawn any of them. So, uh, yeah, so... We're going to get into this, uh, yeah, Ghostface from the Scream movies. This is the pic I pulled off from the internet as my reference. And as usual, I'm going to start off with my underlying drawing, just a bunch of uh, scribbles, kind of, trying to get the shape of the form, where I want the, how I want the uh, arms to look and everything. And uh, yeah, I'm going to time lapse through this, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit while I'm time lapsing as I get the figure down and the structures down underneath. So, let's get into it. Alright, yep. As I've said in the past, my my underlying drawings are really, really loose. As you can tell, like super loose. I don't even know more, ten times more than what loose would be. But what I'm doing is just putting down the underlying drawing. When you, when you draw, a lot of people can just go uh, uh, down and put your lines how um, how they see them in their head. And that works for some people. But a lot of times you need to know where your arms are, where your legs are, the twist of the body and everything. So that's what I'm trying to figure out right here. And as I said, I do a lot of scribbles because I'm kind of trying to find the lines that I want. Come in with a red pen over the top of this just to more, just to really flesh out where I want everything. Okay, I got my underdrawings here all done. Drop the opacity on this one, about right, pretty low there, about 20%. New layer on top of that for my inks. And as always, I'm just using a studio pen that I've modified a little bit. It's just a regular studio pen inside uh, Procreate. Just hit the little icon there and you can adjust the streamline to however much you want. I keep mine pretty high. And we're going to get into this drawing here. So yeah, ghost face from the Scream movies. As I said in my Chucky video, how high is my brush? Drop it down to a 25. Uh, as I said in my Chucky videos, I'm not that big of a fan of horror movies. And when it comes to um, horror movies, I guess I do prefer these types as opposed to, uh, you know, the the demonic where the, the killer's going to sacrifice somebody. <laughs> so these ones I did, I did see Scream, uh, I think came out the same time around. I know what you did last summer. And what was the other one? Jeepers Creepers. All those kind of came out around the same time. Just switched back to my underdrawing here because I'm trying to fit, rough out this um, pose of this hand holding this knife a little bit better. But yeah, Scream movies. I enjoyed them for what they were. I know they're doing a reboot or they did a reboot. I don't know if it's, it, it's out on the, uh, I think it was MTV or somebody was doing it like that. Had all the, I, I think if I remember right, didn't it have like all the tropes and everything from horror movies? The guy, who was it, Jamie Kennedy? And uh, he was quoting all the horror movie tropes that, you know, you should never do and never say. But I know Matthew Lillard was in it. That guy, I, I enjoy that dude's acting. He's pretty funny. He had that funny line at the end where he's trying to act like, uh, well, he was the accomplice of the killer, right? And he's the killer trying to hide the fact that he's an accomplice. Stabs him, but then he stabs him too deep. And he gets all, oh, I think you stabbed me too deep. I'm dying here, bro. So, yeah, now I'm just kind of um, putting down my lines, as I've said. You know, inkers can add a lot of stuff, a lot of different delicacies, a lot of different, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
different things that can help a drawing. They're not just tracers, but in my case, I am kind of just a tracer, trying to just go over my lines, how I like them, how I want them, making a few minor adjustments here and there. But for the most part, just trying to stay with the lines I put down, and that's why it's important to have those underdrawing lines there, because that's... That is where your structure of your drawing is. And a body without a skeleton underneath is just going to be a big pile of glob that's just jelloing around everywhere, right? And the same is going to be for your, um, the same is going to be for your drawing. If you have no structure underneath, it's just going to look it might come out okay and especially you know if you're doing this already I'm gonna put this on a new layer so it makes it a little bit easier to erase for a second but if you're doing this as a as a either a professional or someone who's been drawing for a very long time a lot of times like I said you don't really need that underlying drawing there you have your way of doing things and it's working for you and everything looks good but when you're first getting started and you're first looking how to draw that underlying structure, that skeleton for your for your drawing, as it were, really helps a lot. And uh, you know what? Even if you've been drawing for a long time, like I've been, I've been drawing for quite a while, but I still keep my underlying drawing just because it helps me visualize it a lot easier. Now, so what I'm doing now, this guy is, as you can tell from the reference picture. I mean, it's, there is no color to this. Unlike my Chucky drawing from Child's Play, uh, he, you know, he has that colorful sweater, the, the, the overalls with the good guys written on and everything. This guy is just gray and black. So I'm going to add some more shadows and everything inside his clothes. His main tunic, robe, whatever you want to call it, is going to be, um, it's going to be black, but it's not going to be pure black. I'm going to keep it like maybe a little bit lighter of a shade. But everything else I'm putting in here. Darn it. <clears throat> Everything else I'm putting in here with shadows to get to give it a little bit more um, dimension. And a little bit more, you know, so so it pops a little bit off the off the page. Because if it's just all dull and gray, then um, and it's just going to be one big steaming pile of nothing. All right, let's get into the face here. So as you can see, uh, the, this is where it's really helpful to use reference to so you can get the right proportions, right curvatures of the eyes and nose, all that good stuff. So I think I have it how I want it. I'm just going to go over my lines here. Still using my studio brush. See if he has a little, kind of has a little bit of an indentation kind of around the eyes. So I'm just going to add that in there. Now the mouth, mouth is kind of giving me a little bit of trouble because I don't know how wide I want it up at the top near the nose. Let's try this though. The cool thing I thought about, um, Scream and the Ghostface Killer was, you know, on the surface, it's such a cheesy, it's such a cheesy costume, right? It's like just this guy in a black robe with this screaming skull that does that doesn't really have a uh, a demented or a very evil face to it. I mean, the eyes aren't scowling. He isn't looking. The mask isn't looking at someone with you know murderous eyes. It's almost screaming in pain and and terror. But then he's out, he's the killer, and it, it just, it's a really cool dichotomy, I thought, that they used for this, uh, for this horror movie villain. Which again, kind of difficult to call them villains. 
because people always want to see more of them. So maybe just the antagonist. Because there is a protagonist in the movies. I think I like that. All right, let's finish off the robe here and then I'll have to get into the knife. I'm gonna draw the knife on a different layer. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna merge these two together. Those are for my shadow layers. Add a new layer on top and it's gonna be for the knife. And actually I'm gonna go back to my rough layer real quick. Rough this out a little bit better. the opacity a bit so I can see a little bit more. There we go. It goes through the arms, or not the arms, the fingers. And then the blade is gonna be a little bit I don't want to I don't want it drawing right over this line here as far as you know one line on top of the other line. You want to kind of keep it separate so you don't have that um so it doesn't look like that line blends in with the other one. Is that big enough? Yeah, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> I think it has a line kind of in the middle. And there's some blood on it we'll add in the coloring stage. That looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is go to this new layer here for my knife layer. And now we are going to All right, I think that looks pretty good. So now we're going to erase this part of this drawing, the under drawing, which is the, the, the basically the entire figure. And with that layer highlighted, take my eraser and I'm just gonna erase parts that are showing in the in the knife. So give the knife itself its drawing layer. I'm gonna have to come in here and erase that part there, but we'll do that in a second. And that way. So you see how this doesn't line up with the straight line of what the mask was underneath there. If it did that, it would form kind of a tangent that I don't really pay attention to most tangents, but something like that would just kind of really catch your eye if it's that obvious. So that's why I move the knife up just a little bit so it crosses over. And you can see there are two separate planes here and not just one straight line going down. All right, go back to my knife layer. Got to erase this little part here. And we're looking good. Finish off his hand. And I think we'll be ready to color this, which hopefully shouldn't take that much time because like I said, it's just, just a monotone grays and blacks. Fingers here. And really you can do pretty much anything you want with your fingers. As long as they have that underdrawing underneath be okay. Kind of give him his little strange fingers pointed out there. All right. Now, 
finish off this under drawing with a hood up top still. So in my last video, I did some shadows on Chucky, but I'm not going to do very many shadows here. What I'm going to do is really add the shadows just in straight black. So like I said, this is just a, a scary character. So, and it's all black and gray as far as colors go. So just adding the shadows just as a straight black. I might add a few here. Uh, but not many. Because this character re works really well in just black and white. So what I'm trying to do here is find all these little places that might look really good for shadows coming in. All right, let's see. Take off all that underdrawing there. And that's what we got so far. Add a little bit of a line here for this knife. I'm gonna merge these two layers now. All right, so now, new layer underneath. Set this one to reference lock it so I don't accidentally color it. And what I'm gonna do is put a pretty dark gray there. See, what, whoops, cancel that. Color layers, see what that looks like. Is that too dark? No, I think that looks all right. It is fairly dark, but that's okay because that's pretty much what this character calls for. But let's see what it looks like a little bit lighter. Actually, I think the lighter works a little bit. It helps the black pop out of there a little bit more. I'm gonna change the color to a little bit darker for the belt here, just to give it some contrast. Sometimes when the inks have a little sliver of white in there, I just color it over with the black. More of the mask here. <clears throat> and now for the gloves, I think I'm gonna use the same color as I used for the belt for the gloves. That'll work. And let's do a pretty light silver right there for the knife handle. And then for the blade itself, a lighter silver. Now it's open to the face, but that's all right. We'll just color it in by hand here. But I, I think I want it a little bit lighter than that. I am going to color the the face white, even though it's white from the background. I want I want white the white color on the the color layer itself, so that there's colors on everything and it's not. If you took away the um, the color layer, it would just kind of be open, 
there wouldn't be anything there. So adding color itself will help. And what I'm going to do is add my selection tool, freehand this over because it's it is open from the blade and if I try to drag and drop on the the face itself the blade is going to change colors. Regular white. I'm gonna do a little bit of a, a bit of a off white kind of. What happened? I'm not sure why it did that. So I have to go over and do it again. This time, I'm only do half, and so we can see what the difference looks like here. So it's really hard to pick up. I don't even know if the camera's going to be able to pick up, but it is a difference in color there. The white is just super white, and then the off-white has a, has a little bit of pigmentation to it. I'll finish this off here. Done. Looks like I colored over the lines over here. All right, now to add some blood to this blade. I wonder what it looks like in the reference. Well, it's almost splattery. So what we can do actually for that, let's do a little trick here. So what you'll do is on a new layer, we're not going to use the same color layer. We're going to add a new layer over the top of our color layer. Do our selection tool here. So now that that's selected, switch colors here, switch to the brush, and what I'm going to do first is do a little bit of a, just here, and that's why, on, that's why we selected the blade because only the blade is uh, the part that's going to be colored, and we could leave it like that, but it is kind of splattery, splattered on the, uh, splattery? <laughs> splattered on the blade. So what I'm going to do is play around a little bit here. So you're basically adding just spot marks here, drips and drags. And what we can do since as it is rolling off this side and make sure it's kind of falling the right way. So that looks like that way it looks like the dread the blood is just kind of dripping off of the blade here. I think we're pretty much done with this one. Now we just got to add some type of background. Yeah, I like the way that came out. All right. So I'll undo the selection tool there. I'm going to keep the blade on its separate layer. I'm not going to merge it with the other color layer. And now we just need a background. But I think this character is a little bit too small for this. So what I'm going to do is select my blood layer, my regular ink layer, or color layer, and my inks layer. I have to unlock it first before I do this. Unlock. So I swiped right on all three of those. They're all selected. So now I can go to the move tool and I can just make this bigger. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Looked a little bit too small on the canvas there. All right, so now I made the image bigger. Get rid of my reference picture. Now we're going to do a new layer underneath all of this. And I am going to, what I'm going to do is un take away all those. I'm going to lock this back up so I don't mess it up accidentally. So I have kind of a blank layer because I've hidden the other ones. I'm going to go to my grays. I'm going to go to airbrushing. 
I'm gonna go with medium brush. And what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna go a little darker each way. And it's gonna, I'm gonna, what I'm doing is gonna be putting a gradient on this thing. I'm gonna be using the tools up in the options here, but first I'm gonna put down this so it looks, hopefully it looks better. And now at the very top, we'll make it dark. All right, so now we have that kind of gradient there, which if that's what you wanted it to look like, you could just stop right there. But with this layer selected still, I'm gonna to go to my options tool here, not the options tool, the adjustments tool. Go to the Gaussian blur, select the layer. And now just keeping your pin on the screen, you can adjust it how much you want. Just about right there, about 45% or so. And untap that and now bring in here. And now we have good gradient layer in the background. And we are all set. Ghost face from the movie Scream. All right. Thanks for watching this. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe down below. Let me know if you've ever seen the movie Scream, what you thought about it, what other horror movies you like or do not like. Uh, give me some suggestions. I'm still taking suggestions for uh, November and December coming up on different videos to make. I have a few ideas, but always taking suggestions. And uh, yeah, thanks again. And I will see you in the next video.